All right, so we are looking at the all-time Jaguars team. The Jacksonville Jaguars are a fairly new team. You're looking at established in November 30th, 1993. It's been 23 years now, pretty much. And uh, first season ever was 1995. Pretty much where they're headquartered and where they play in is the Everbank Field out there in Jacksonville, Florida. It's a very low-market team in terms of people don't really – they don't attract the big stars that go there because Jacksonville as a team hasn't had the success of the other teams as the Steelers, as the 49ers have it before, as the Seahawks are doing, you know, as the Pats, you know. So there's different teams. This is a fairly new team. I mean, so far it's only been six playoff appearances for them. They've had two division titles. They've won no conference championships. They haven't won any Super Bowls. So – this is a very young team that right now has the head coach of Doug Marone, and uh, they're just trying to figure it out. You know, they really are. I mean, overall, a record of 156 wins and 197 losses. So a team that loses more than wins is going to have a rough history. But there have been very great highlights out of this team, and we should definitely look at the all-time players to see what all these guys are made of. And uh, it's going to be fun. QB. Mark Brunel, we're going to start right there at the quarterback position. We need a guy there that can throw the football pretty much. This is a guy that a lot of people know as a backup, but he actually was really good at the start of his career being a part of this team of the Jaguars, this 90s team where they got to two AFC championship games, didn't get to the Super Bowl. But, I mean, look, look can, honestly, what better that can you have than having this guy just really, honestly – it's a guy that deserves it. He's been around for, for years, it feels like. Um, I believe it's been for I don't know, 15, 16 years or so, 17. Um, so overall, fantastic quarterback. And, you know, getting drafted by the Green Bay Packers and then going to Jacksonville. I mean, Jacksonville, he had a really good career. He had actually played there for eight years. And in that eight years, I mean, he was, he was throwing. He was throwing pretty well. And overall, I feel like this is the best QB out of the Jacksonville Jaguars organization. Blake Bortles is just, he's got a lot to definitely learn. David Gard, fantastic, but I see him more as a backup. If I were to have backup list, I'm not going to have him just having starters. So the starter of this QB of this team, of this franchise, is Mark Brunel. He's the best quarterback that Jacksonville has ever had in their entire history. And honestly, I really, really like this. I like this entire start of their team now. Because Mark Burnell can run too. If you put him there in a great age, obviously. If, you know, they're all young and stuff. He's a good runner. And he's a good passer. So. Fullback, it's going to be Greg Jones. Greg Jones, terrific guy. Big bodied guy. Going to block. Going to do well doing that. When he has to run the ball, he will. He has done it. Pretty much played every single year of his career except one as a Jaguar. So he does deserve to be on this list. You know, 6'1", 248, he's going to get it done. He's going to block for the running back that you'll see who I have next. And um, I think that's a great tandem of having him and the running back. And you need a running back right now. So who's going to be your running back? Your running back is going to be Fred Taylor, the best running back in this franchise. Yes, you can make a case for Maurice Jones-Drew. I think Maurice Jones-Drew is fantastic, a guy that was – Probably my mom's height, and that guy was able to like have run 80 yards, bring everyone down, literally like have six five people dragging six five people around. Like that's fantastic. But Fred Taylor is a he's a very impactful guy. He literally he deserves that crown of being the best running back because he has had one of the best years. And overall, I mean, when you look at the numbers, it all goes down. He has over 11,000 rushing yards. He deserves to be, in my opinion, he deserves to be in the hall. I think he's really, he's just been a, such a great competitor for so long. And, you know, playing till from 22 to 34, having that 13-year career, you know, he, he deserves respect. And I got to give it to him. I got to give him this spot. I think having Mark Brunel, having his the fullback of Greg Jones, and having Fred Taylor, it's a pretty great backfield. I really enjoy that already. I think that will work tremendous, and it will help this team. And running the ball should not be an issue. 
Now, the wide receiver will be Jimmy Smith. He's going to be thrown to, to Mark Brunel, one of the most underrated wide receivers in the 1990s. People don't even know who this guy is, um, except me and a few other people that truly know everything about history about it. So I'm not blaming anyone that doesn't know him. But at the same time, I am because literally this guy was the best receiver of all. Literally very underrated. Guy that should be in the Hall of Fame that isn't. Guy that's never recognized for anything because Jacksonville, Florida is, you know, it's a small, smallish city. People don't really know much about this team. This team's young. But this guy, five-time Pro Bowler, guy that at one point, you know, kept having 80-plus receptions. A lot of a lot of receiving yards, had a lot of touchdowns. He was pretty much Mark Brunel's like favorite target, and I feel like having him is a big big thing. And you know his name is Lightning for a reason. He's the guy that brings the fire. He's the guy that brings the energy. And I think being able to run the ball with Fred Taylor, but at the same time also being able to pass the ball with Jimmy Smith, already it's showing some offensive firepower, and uh, it's definitely going to show and the numbers that you put in this all-time league, as you can say, if there was an all-time league. Okay, so when there's a storm, you have thunder and you have lightning. It's, it's literally like rainstorm, it's thunder, lightning, and that's what the best duo, one of the really overrated, overrated, underrated duos receiving-wise in NFL history is thunder and lightning. Lightning was Jimmy Smith. Thunder is Keenan McCardle. Keenan McCardle is the other receiver at the other end. Mark Brunel, Keenan McCardle, and Jimmy Smith, they're all going to be fantastic together. That's already, like, no doubt. Like, they're going to have a lot of receptions, I believe. Obviously, you know, they're going to go up against all-time secondaries, all-time defenses. But I really believe Keenan McCardle, Jimmy Smith, they're going to be successful. I think having... The fact that, you know, you got Mark Bernard, you got Fred Taylor, you got Greg Jones. Now you have one side Jimmy, one side Keenan. I like this duo. I think this is one of my favorite duos in terms of all-time teams. It's just, I really love seeing them. I love seeing their documentary. And if you haven't already, see it. It's a, it's a football life, actually. It's about them. And uh, honestly, just two fantastic football players. They really have been overlooked. So check it out. Really good. I'm telling you, really, really good. Tight end, Mercedes Lewis. Still playing, still going at it. Big body tight end. Uh, honestly, he really hasn't, I wouldn't say he's one of the top receivers at all for any given reason. He's not, he definitely hasn't been healthy though for the most part. He's had some trouble with that. And overall, his entire career has been kind of like that. He's been able to bruise when he's on the field though. So that's always good. He's able to, you know, to be that spark out there. But you gotta, you know, you gotta understand he is the best tight end that they have had in their entire history. So when he has, he has actually produced to the extent of best receiver, best tight end in the league. No, he's never been the best tight end. He's never been top ten tight end in the league. But he's been pretty productive, and I think his six six frame will do just fine. I think he'll be great at blocking. I think he'll be great for pass catching. I think he'll definitely. He'll definitely, he'll definitely have more numbers. His numbers will definitely go up because Jimmy Smith, Keenan McCardle, if they have a matchup where they're shut down, Mercedes Lewis, he's going to be right there. He's a big dude, so not many people can really cover a big tight end like him. So having him is a big plus. And, I mean, this entire weaponry of what they got here in Jacksonville is really scary. Honestly, the two receivers are fantastic. They have a great running back, great fullback, great QB, and now – a really, really special, great tight end that they can use. Not the best, but very productive. When he when he puts on the pads, he's definitely going to be productive out there. Left tackle, Tony Baselli. Tony Baselli will be the starting left tackle for a guy that had a short career. This guy was an animal. Pretty much drafted in 95 and drafted and drafted. Dra drafted in 95, yes. Played in 95 and ended his career in 2001. Pretty much due to injury, not nothing else, because this guy was a three-time All-Pro and a five-time Pro Bowler. So, honestly, he was fantastic. There's no way that this guy shouldn't be up for Hall of Fame induction, because in his Hall of Fame career, he made a case for being the best left tackle 
every single year being the best offensive lineman every single year that he's played pretty much always been a case of his stardom and honestly he's a big reason Mark Bernal's blind side on his side at least was covered super well um, not many guys would go past him just a fa fantastic big body tackle that gets it done he's going to protect everyone and having him is going to protect Mark Bernal a bunch so yes I really enjoy having Tony Baselli as a left tackle out there I think he's going to be you know he's just he's the man dude he's going to be fantastic and I have a lot of confidence in this in this guy uh, going forward on this line left guard Vince Manuai so Vince Manuai really a guy got drafted in 03 he's played seven years and all with Jacksonville all of them he's just he's got to have a consideration of being you know the best one of the best linemen out of this franchise all time the best guard no for sure not but he was always there he was always pretty present he may he had that one year when he only played one game due to injury but he was always there I mean he played in 111 games and he started 105 so this guy was there and he was present and he was a pretty good guard he really was and I think having Tony Baselli and Vince Manawa Manuai, sorry and if I pronounce that name wrong I'm very sorry as well but having those two guys there on that side, that left side of the line, that's going to create so much open space for Fred to kind of get holes in. Because those two guys are, you know, like I said, they're, they're big guys. Like, they're, they're big dudes. And having those two guys blocking that, you know, have, having open lanes for, for Fred, having open lanes for Greg, having some space at least for Mark Burnell to kind of shift over there and, see what he can do maneuver around to get you know one of those receivers there i really enjoy those two line um it's already a really good line from those two right now center brad meester exactly what you need you need a a really tough nose center kind of guy especially if you want to be a great line you got to get great line you know you got to get great linemen in there you got to get line that that really can come together and uh you know for that for those moments in that game, they're going to be nasty. You know, they may be friends with the other side of the, the opponent, you know, but you need a guy that's going to be nasty. Brad Meester, low key, nasty guy, great center, has been there for a very long time. Also, because he's the best center that the Jaguars franchise has ever had. Again, this is a very young franchise, so really all their players here, you'll see um, some of them are, you know, fairly new, still playing or. You know, their careers, definitely, you don't know much about him. But he was a guy that played almost every single snap, pretty much, for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Switched from left guard to center, so you know his flexibility is there. And just overall, I really, really enjoy that. Like, right now, that left side of the line with the center right now, that's complete. I really like that. Now we'll have to see the right side and see how that does. But right now, I really enjoy what they got. Center position is exactly what you need. Brad Meester, fantastic. So overall, yeah, I really enjoy what I got in terms of what I got in terms of what they got. What I got in terms of how I made the list. I really enjoy how I put this together in terms of who's trying to get who, who's, you know, who's every position. But who the Jacksonville Jaguars have as a franchise, yes, I really enjoy their entire, um, so far, this entire roster, so far. Right guard, Chris Nioli. So, the other right guard I mean, to get with Vince Manu Manuwa is Chris Nioli. Two Hawaiian natives, honestly. Big guys, 6'2", 6'3", over 300 pounds. This is a really big line, dude. This is guys that are over 300 pounds, and they can move. They can move pretty well. So, overall, I like everything about this right now. Nioli not like Manuai, where he was drafted by the Saints, didn't get to Jacksonville till 2002, but a part of Jacksonville, he was pretty much a part of every game except 2007, where he just played eight games, um, I believe due to an ankle injury, but I'm not sure. Overall, reliable lineman, and lineman that I know will clog up a lane. Oh, a big lane these are big dudes so they will clog up some good lanes for running backs for this offense that's supposed to achieve offensive greatness so honestly I really like this 
line. This line's huge. And uh, I mean, every line is huge, but this line's huge. So um, honestly, I enjoy this line. We'll just have to see how they do up against, you know, top defenses of all time teams, though. Right tackle, Maurice Williams. Really enjoyed this thing. Is right tackle, Maurice Williams. I think um, a really productive line. Probably, I would say, the weakest guy on the line, though, unfortunately, just because his career has been diminished due to injuries for the most part. Um, you know, I think Tony Baselli's, though, impact with him will just, you know, I think he'll be right. I think, honestly, they should be fine for the most part, as long as Maurice Williams does his job, just blocks well. He should be fine. Uh, having a career every single year playing for Jacksonville from 2001 to 2009. So this guy has had a lot of good history in terms of moving around. I mean, he was a right tackle, but there was a point where he had to play right guard for a bit. And he did pretty well. So you can see he's a flexible guy. He's able to expand if you need to reposition him with different, you know, alignments of positions. He's able to do that. It just shows that he's a good player and he's able to, to play and not complain of where he's at. He can be a tackle, he can be a guard. So pretty great. Um, but yeah, still, like I said, due to injuries, he may be kind of the weakest link on the line. But his big body should make up for it. Like I said, as long as he continuously listens to Tony Baselli's words of wisdom, I think he should be fine. Um, just, I still would be cautious in terms of Mark Brunel's back about that. that Right guard is pretty great. I really do like the right guard. Right tackle is great. Not as great as the left side. So I would say the left side is more covered than the right side. But for the most part, this line is pretty complete. This offense is pretty complete. And that, that pretty much ends my entire offensive side of the Jacksonville Jaguars all-time team.